All right, everybody, welcome to the People's Ward F Community Caucus, where we dissect the City Council agenda. Uh, I am Erica Walker, Chief of Staff for the Office of Councilman Gilmore. As you can see on your screen, uh, this is our newsletter. There's a lot going on this weekend, uh, so I can understand if you are viewing this after the fact and not live. Uh, as we mentioned in our newsletter, currently taking place right now is the Jersey City Together uh, Breakfast Workshop, assisting individuals with mental health and substance issues, substance use issues. Uh, also taking place as we speak is the Liberty State Park um, in-person meeting regarding public comments for the LSP task force. Very, two very important meetings. So I understand if you are not able to be present with us today, but this is recorded for your convenience so you can view review the city council's agenda live with us. With that said, we're gonna go to everythingwardf.com and click on community caucus to get to the city council agenda. We just click on this little button, view the city council agenda. The next city council meeting will take place on March 6th of 2024. I'm gonna go ahead and split screen so we can see the backup data at the same time. So again, this is uh, the agenda for the regular meeting of the municipal council taking place on Wednesday, March 6th with the caucus taking place on Monday, March 4th at 4 p.m. Again, as we always like to reiterate, the public cannot speak on Monday. The public is not welcome to speak at the caucus only during the regular Wednesday council meeting. So this is why we hold this community caucus on Saturday so that we can get the public's feedback and speak on their behalf on Monday. So Councilman Gilmore can speak on your behalf. Um, with that said, we'll take it straight from the top, which is the first readings. Part three of the agenda is the first reading ordinances. These ordinances will have a second opportunity to be heard. And during what at that time, they'll become the at the next meeting, they'll become second readings. And that is the opportunity for public engagement um, or for pu public speaking. We'd like to engage with the public um, prior to to make sure um, these ordinances don't have any foreseen issues. Okay, so with that said, 3.1 is an ordinance of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City adopting amendments to the Paulus Hook Redevelopment Plan and creating the Block 11606 Redevelopment Plan. This was withdrawn from a first reading at the last meeting. It's back on as a first reading. We did reach out to um, Paulus Hook. Uh, half of Paulus Hook is in Ward E and the other half is in Ward F. We did reach out to members of the Paulus Hook area um, to get their feedback. Um, so we'll reach back out to them again. Um, and we'll also ask uh, planning if any changes have been made since um, they first tried to make this a first reading at the last caucus meeting. 3.2 is an ordinance of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City adopting amendments to the Liberty Harbor North Redevelopment Plan regarding use and bulk standards on tax block 15907, also known as block 24 on the redevelopment plan. So this is re with regards to Liberty Harbor North. Uh, we'll do the same thing, reach out to residents and block association leaders of the Liberty Harbor North area to ensure that they're aware of the changes being made to the redevelopment plan. We like to follow these changes um, because these changes will affect you. They affect density. We all, we all know that the city's master plan calls for greater density. It calls for less parking. Um, so we have to pay attention to what areas of these redevelopment zones are specifically being affected um, so that we can let the neighbors know how they will be affected as well. 3.3 3 is an ordinance supplementing chapter 332, vehicles and traffic, article two, traffic regulations, section 332-8, prohibited right turns on red signals uh, to prohibit turns on red at all times at municipal locations in proximity to schools and parks in the Heights neighborhood. Um, this is awesome. Um, uh, this is good for the Heights. Uh, I would like to see this citywide. Um, and this is um, 
a good example of how traffic can be more proactive when they see what's good for the goose should be good for the gander, right? If we're protecting schools in the heights <laughs> and we're protecting children and pedestrians um, in the heights, why not protect children and pedestrians across Jersey City? Um, so we'll have conversations with Councilman Gilmore. We'll have conversations with the community um, at our next town hall would be a great opportunity um, to throw this out there. Do you think it's a good idea for there to be no turn on red at throughout the city throughout, or, or we can only speak for Ward F, um, but do you think it's a good idea to implement this law in Ward F as well? There would be no turn on red um, at all of these streets at all times. Um, and that allows for pedestrians to have a real chance to cross the street. Um, if anybody has ever tried to cross the street, um, you know, while it's, a, 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 um, it's a red light. So it means green for pedestrians, but if cars are turning red, then you have to wait for these cars. And by the time the car is finished turning red, the light's green, you missed your opportunity. Um, so again, th this is an awesome example of uh, how traffic can take something that's good and bring it to the attention of all to see if we would like to do this across the board. Um, but for right now, it's ward by ward. So that is the first readings. These will have an opportunity um, to be heard again at the next city council meeting. If you have any questions or concerns, comments, please feel to email our office, ewalker at jcnj.org or fegilmore at jcnj.org. All of our contact information is on our website. Just click on contact your councilman to get uh, the best way to contact our office. On to second readings. This is the last time that the public will have an opportunity to speak um, on this resolution. I'm sorry, on this ordinance. Um, it was a first, these ordinances were first readings at the last meeting. Um, and now uh, they will go into law if voted in at the next city council meeting. The great thing about ordinances is you second, the great thing about second reading ordinances is you do not have to sign up to speak um for them you can just come up to the podium and speak before the council votes you do have to rush though because councilman <laughs> rivera and yusuf they be quick to close the public speaking portion um so um i i urge anybody to come out and uh experience council meetings and understand how how interesting they can get um, and how important it is for you to have a voice. Um, right now, we only have nine public speakers listed. Um, I, I love when this list grows because that means we have concerned citizens appearing. Pardon, I have a cold. Oh, I have the flu, not just the cold. Okay, uh, so we will talk about um, Second reading ordinances now. The first second reading ordinances ordinance is an ordinance naming the playground located at J. Owen Grundy Park as the Jeremy Farrell playground in, on, in honor of Jeremy Farrell. If you would like to rename a park or a street after um, someone, just reach out to our office and we'll let you know how to do that. There is a form, it's a whole process um, to try to get that done. 4.2 is an ordinance amending chapter 69, special improvement districts, article two, Central Avenue, special improvement district. And 4.3 is an ordinance approving technical amendments to ordinances 22-084 and 23-103 to correct typographical errors. As I mentioned, uh, public hearing requests, uh, if you want to speak at the city council meeting, and it is not related to a second reading ordinance, you must sign up to speak. You must sign up in advance to speak. How do you do that? You can go to everythingwardf.com, click on Community Caucus, and there you will see all the ways that you can participate. This um, third quadrant right here, sign up to speak. You can also visit the um, city website to learn how to sign up to speak. 
And on to our resolutions. There's about 31 resolutions and we'll take it from the top. Resolution 10.1, resolutions are how we spend our money. This is uh, the administration asking for permission to pay a bill, asking for permission to hire a contractor, asking for permission to, um, some, to look for contracts um, and to extend contracts or renew contracts. Any, any type of way that we spend money has to be um, put into a resolution form. 10.1 is a resolution authorizing an emergency temporary temporary appropriation. So we haven't um, passed our, our annual budget yet. And so until we do that, we'll continue to um, see these emergency temporary appropriations uh, so that we can, so the, so that the city can operate. Uh, so we see, whereas the total temporary budget amount adopted for the calendar year 2024 pursuant to provisions of NJSA 40A, including the amount authorized by this resolution is 172,314,736 dollars already. Erica. And, yes. Hi, good morning. Question is, um, I mean, was was the was there was the budget for twenty twenty four even like presented in January? Yes. Okay. Yes. It was presented. We had budget hearings. Um, the we have the link. The budget hearings are available on demand on YouTube. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. I mean, we 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 had budget hearings. Um, it it was they were preliminary budget hearings, so maybe they're still amending them for to finalization. Um, I don't know what the holdup is, though. Yeah, okay. I mean, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to my knowledge, they were preliminary budget hearings. They weren't the finalized budgets. Um, but it's it's one of the steps that um, they implemented this year to try to get the budgets in early um, to do to do those preliminary budget hearings early, and then they're supposed to do them again um, with the final versions, I believe. Um, so. Um, but yes, the they are available on um, YouTube, and I did send out links to them in one of our previous newsletters. Um, we we need to put it on our website so they're readily accessible that way as well. Um, but if you just search um, YouTube uh, Jersey City Budget Hearings, you can find them that way. Ten point two is a resolution honoring McLaughlin Funeral Home for ninety three years of service to the community. 10.3 is a resolution celebrating March 31st as Transgender Day of Visibility in the City of Jersey City. 10.4 is a resolution recognizing Sikh Heritage Month in the month of April of 2024. 10.5 is a resolution honoring retired General Edward M. Daly on his street naming dedication. Again, if you want to get a street named after someone, just reach out to our office and we'll let you know what the qualifications are. 10.6 is a resolution approving the appointment of Joyce Claiborne as per diem municipal prosecutor for the city of for the city of Jersey City Municipal Court. 10.7 is a resolution appointing attorneys at law in the state of New Jersey to serve as public defenders in the city of municipal court for calendar year 2024. Let's see who these new public defenders are. All right, so we've got about a dozen here or more, a couple dozen, if these are all different. And all their resumes attached. The maids are attached. I'd like to look at public defenders' resumes to see how long they've been public servants or like to see if they've had any um, community engagement besides being a public defender. Like what are their hobbies on the side? What nonprofit organizations do they 
work with? Do they really care about the people they're defending? Because they get paid, they get paid with our tax dollars. So I don't see any res resumes. I'm gonna ask for resumes. They get paid total contract. Is this for one person? 467? Yep. Public defenders get $467,000. Is this for multiple years? Yeah, no, they don't get paid like that. That that has to be like yeah, a that's, multiple, that's, multiple that's year. That's definitely, um, it's either a multi-year term or for multiple people. Yeah. Okay. They have one over. person named on each of these. So, the okay, the total contract is 467. So this yeah. must be all of them. Yeah, for all of them. Yeah. Okay, it's for one year, but each of these, okay, unit price, they get 7,500 each. Okay. Whew. All right. 10.8 is a resolution ratifying a professional services agreement with Andrew C. Abrams, attorney at law in the state of New Jersey to serve as the chief municipal public defender in the Jersey City Municipal Court, in addition to performing his duties as a public defender for calendar year 2024. Okay, 14,000. 10.9 is a resolution awarding the contract, uh, authorizing the award of contract to New Jersey Institute of Technology to provide software development services for the Jersey City Municipal Court Community Solutions Program under fiscal year 22 Community Court Initiative Grant Award. And that'll be 60,000, it looks like. And, and installments of 20,000. 10.10 .10 is a resolution ratifying an award of contract to the Software House International Corporation for the purchase of 2024 maintenance of the City of Jersey City's Police Division and Fire Division Info Share Public Safety Project through the New Jersey Cooperative Purchasing Alliance, Bergen County Co-op for the Department of Public Safety Communications and Technology Center. We have spent a lot of money on this center. 10.11 is a resolution ratifying the award of contract to Verizon Business Network for the police data services under New Jersey State Contract for the Department of Public Safety Division of Communications and Technology Center. 10.12 is a resolution authorizing the Jersey City Department of Health and Human Services to accept grant funds for the National Opioid Abatement Trust II. So we can ask questions like, what do they plan to do with these funds? How are they, what kind of programs are they implementing with these funds? Expanding awareness and support with expected outcome to decrease the number of opiate overdose, overdose in Jersey City. I'd like her to come with some statistics on um, how uh, we've improved since um, accepting these funds. <laughs> 10 point thirteen is a resolution appointing an animal control officer with the authority to investigate and enforce animal control laws of the state and certain ordinances on behalf of the city of Jersey City. Um, because I think right now it's the regular police that come out um, to check on these calls. Uh, 10.14 is a resolution of the governing body certification of compliance with the United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission's enforcement guidance on the consideration of arrest and conviction records with employment decisions under Title uh, Five, under Title Seven of the Civil Rights Act. All right, Erica, can we go back to the animal officer one? I'm so sorry, it's Sheena. No problem. Um, yeah, I want to come back to this one too. Um, yeah, okay. I just, uh, Mike, just to share my concerns around what's going on this week. Um, I don't know if we all heard that our new director of the city shelter, Darcy, um, broke her arm this week. Oh. Uh, you know, question is whether it was where things were mishandled 
because it was there was a dog involved and that dog has been put down. So if the director of our new city shelter is not experienced enough to within the first two months of her tenure here handle stray dogs, which is the whole part of the job, you know, what are we doing with our qualifications here? What are we looking for in terms of animal control officers? Again, this is a very tough business to be in. Um, we're choosing not to put this service out to a third party that knows what they're doing. And so we've taken this on as a city. And so far, you know, as the mayor keeps saying that it's successful, he keeps saying to the press that it's already successful. Um, you can hear in my voice that I disagree. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Gina. Hi. You said that the, okay, so the, the animal shelter's director Yep. Broke her arm dealing with the dog, and they put the dog down? That's what we are hearing. Isn't it that? Okay. I, 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 okay. It should be. It's, Darcy should be able to handle dogs to a point where within her first two months there, she's not breaking her arm because of some issue. Or, um, or and I don't want to. I haven't seen anything in writing, Councilman Gilmore, so I don't want to, you know, I don't want to. I haven't sent Erica anything definitive because I don't want y'all to, you know, to, to be saying anything about hearsay. Um, you know, I want to be absolutely sure of all the things that have happened before we bring this up. I just want y'all to be aware that there's still very much concern about how this whole shelter thing is being handled and not because people's hearts aren't in the right place either. People are really, they want to do the right thing. This is just a really tough kind of work. And we're not outsourcing it to a professional third party or a humane society any longer. And so now we've taken on this risk as a city. And that is very worrisome in the way that it's already starting to play out. So I just wanted to raise the concern since this item is on here. Also, where is the animal control officer coming from? Because we also just got another there's an, an animal control officer um, locally who was just found guilty of animal abuse. And so, again, we just want to be really careful. Um, yeah. and, uh, Mark, now Mark, are they speak, is this specifically for Mark's appointment? Mark Burns? It does. Uh, it's it mm, with him. W. Mark Byrne, an all-certified animal control officer yeah. hired by or uh, hired by or contracting with the city are hereby appointed by the city of Jersey City to perform the duties. So he... So, so far, I will say, yeah, so far I will say, Erica, that Mark has an excellent ex um, excellent reputation in the rescue community. He has a really good track record. And so I wouldn't want to get in his way until he proves otherwise. Like, I think we want to support him as much as possible in any place that they're putting him. He ran the Bergen County um, Animal Shelter Collective uh, serving 52 different townships. And he's also a TNR, he's, he's a uh, emerging TNR advocate, which is the care for the community cats that we spend so much time on. Um, and he also is just seems really great. So like, cause we've all met him and he seems really great. So no concerns about him. But just in general, the whole situation around the shelter, right? Because he's running the animal control part. Um, just, again, we continue to have some concerns about people being equipped to deal with what they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. Thank you for letting me share that. I really, really appreciate it, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. We we it's we need uh, residents like you, citizens, Jersey City citizens like you, to bring um, these other um, pieces of information to our attention. Um, it's important that you know you be, you guys be our eyes and ears. Uh, Ten point fourteen is a resolution of the governing body certification of compliance with the United States Equal Opportunity Equal Employment Opportunity Commission's enforcement guidelines on the consideration of arrests and conviction records and employment decisions under Title seven of the Civil Rights Act. Um, it's good to have these types of um, laws on the books and oversight. Um, what is um, even more important though is the application of these of these laws and um, 
the making sure that we have somebody in place to uh, make sure that uh, these laws are being abided by. Enforcement um, is uh, the reoccurring um, issue that we see come across in Jersey City is that we don't have enough enforcers. Um, so I'd like to hear how um, this is going to be enforced. It's nice to see it in black and white. Um, but uh, 10.15 is a resolution authorizing the city of Jersey City to enter into polling place lease agreements with the Hudson County Board of Elections. Uh, we also wanna make sure that we have um, equal opportunity with our polling places uh, at the last elect the last mayoral election and city council election. Um, there were no early voting locations in Ward in Ward F. And, and specifically, there were no early voting locations on the south side. They were all on the all the way on the west, uh, all the way in the north and the, on the east. Um, but as far as early voting in person polling locations, there were none on the south side. So we want to make sure that um, we do look at Ward F district, sec second district. Okay, good. Martin Luther King, good. They learned. Um, looking good. Uh, 1016, a resolution of the city of Jersey City ratifying memorandum of agreement between the city of Jersey City and city Jersey City Supervisors Association. 10.17 is a resolution of the city of Jersey City to approve the memorandum of agreement between the city of Jersey City and the city Jersey City Supervisors Association. I'm sorry, is this a duplicate? Where's the difference? I feel like I'm playing one of those games with my daughter. Can you spot the difference? I'll just remember the JCSA. And okay, this is different. Supervisors Association and They are different, but which one is the one they want us to pay attention to? So we'll get th that clarified at the caucus. It looks like this was input twice. All right, 10.18 is a resolution authorizing the City of Jersey City Office of Historical Preservation to apply for and accept the grant award from the New Jersey Historic Trust Preserve, New Jersey Historic Preservation Fund. Speaking of historic preservation, as I mentioned earlier at the top of this meeting, um, the historic Preservation Master Plan uh, closed its comment period on March 1st. Um, there has been request to extend that deadline to, in, uh, to offer opportunities for block associations to speak with their neighbors, to get a consensus, to reply to the request for comments. Um, and hopefully we'll see that comment period extended again. 10.19 is a resolution of the Municipal Council authorizing the Planning Board to study and amend the Powerhouse Arts District Redevelopment Plan. And this is just to study it. Of course, they're studying it because there's probably a potential developer who wants to make some changes to it so they can put up their large building. 10.20 is a resolution authorizing an award of contract to Herc Rentals, Inc. for the purchase and delivery of a 600 AJ 4WD uh, four-wheel drive diesel articulating boom lift through U.S. Communities Government Purchasing Alliance known as Omnia Partners for the Department of Public Works Division of Automatic Automotive Maintenance at a total of $143,000. 10.21 is a resolution authorizing an award of open-end contract to the Northeast Sweepers and Rentals, Inc. for the purchase and delivery of various parts and repairs for the Ravo Street Sweepers as needed through the Keystone Purchasing Network for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive Maintenance. 10.22 is a resolution authorizing an award of open-end contract to Lawson Products, Inc. for the purchase and delivery of various automotive parts and supplies as needed through the U.S. Communities Government Purchasing Alliance, known as Omnia Partners for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive Maintenance. 10.23 is a resolution authorizing an award of contract to Sintas Corporation for uniform rentals for employees through the U.S. Communities Government Purchasing Alliance, known as Omnia Partners for the Department of Public Works, CPW. 
10.24 is a resolution rejecting the sole bid received by the city of Jersey City on February 6th for the contract known as HVAC and boiler maintenance. Boiler maintenance. Uh, we only got one bid. So um, uh, the city needs to do more than the bare minimum to market these opportunities to bid. Are we communicating with our office of uh, uh, economic opportunity, the uh, diversity? Are we communicating with the office of diversity? How are we marketing these bid opportunities? Um, let's do more than the bare minimum to make sure even the smallest of businesses are aware of this opportunity. 10.25 is a resolution ratifying an award of open-end contract to Western Industries North LLC for the pest control services citywide through the Source Well Purchasing Cooperative, formerly known as the National Joint Powers Alliance for the Department of Public Works. 10.26 is a resolution renewing a professional services agreement with the law firm of McAndrew Vuoto LLC to serve as special counsel in bankruptcy matters. 10.27 is a resolution renewing a professional services agreement with the law firm Whipple Azarello LLC to represent the city of Jersey City in various tort claim matters. 10.28 is a resolution renewing a professional services agreement with Braddy Greenan, LLC, to represent former chief of police Philip Zach in the matter of Kelly Chesler um, versus the city of Jersey City. 10.29 is a resolution renewing a professional services agreement with Cleary Giacobbe Alfieri Jacobs, LLC, to represent Mayor Stephen Fulop and the city of Jersey City in the matter of Athena Ogaro versus the city of Jersey City. 1030 is a resolution renewing a professional services agreement with the law firm Florio Kenny to represent police officers Charles Severas in the matter of Chirag K versus the city of Jersey City. And 1031 is a resolution renewing a professional services agreement with uh, Apruzis McDermott, Mastro and Murphy PC to represent police officer Robert S in the matter of Kelly Chesler versus the city of Jersey City. And that is all of the resolutions that will be voted on. Uh, the rest of the items uh, in part 11 are deferred and tabled. And then we have the adjournment. Any questions or comments? Does anybody None. track how much money we're spending defending city employees and the mayor and such in some of these? Like, is there a risk management role in our city government where somebody is sort of tracking how much do we mess up that we then have to turn around and pay legal services for all this business you know mm -hmm. i'm looking for that email right now gina um i was i've been sick with the flu but uh i i know i owe you an email regarding that uh that response um they respond. Let me see if I can find this response regarding all these. Well, oh, they did respond. Oh my God! Um, well, this was a no month. Worries, Erica. No this worries. this was a, a minute ago. They responded. It was it was some generic response, basically just saying yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basically yeah. just saying yes. Yeah. Trust us. We have experts. You know, doing all these calculations. Um, and so I would like to see like a summary of like maybe like the last yeah. five ten years, um, or just at this administration, right? The last eight um well no 10 years now it's been that no eight yeah this is third term so yeah the last 10 years of settlements the last 10 years of legal expenses um and summarizing wins versus losses and just how many times have we been sued that's the question i had just looking every time i look at these losses it's like do other towns get sued this often um so yeah. um, i'll i will look for that today gina um, and and forward you that response uh, with regards to legal fees because uh, it was it was sometime last year that that our office raised that question with regards to how do we um, how do we decide when to seek outside counsel uh, also um, how do we decide when to settle um, also how much money have we spent on outside counsel like when does it make sense to just hire more lawyers internally versus hiring all of this outside counsel um so i asked 
a bunch of those types of questions um, and I'll forward you their response. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And, and I feel like it's less about even like once we're in the situation and there is a settlement to be had, it's sort of like, OK, well, I, of course, you have to hire. You got to do what you got to do at that point. I'm more thinking like where are the efforts to reduce risk ahead of time? Because. I don't know. I just, I know every place that I've ever worked in corporate America, you have a risk management department and you know, this year risk was, you know, risk expenditures were up. Guess what? We don't get our bonuses, you know, whether or not you directly contributed to that, like it's, it's everybody's responsibility. And so people were held accountable, you know, and it just, as I'm getting used to the city government stuff, I'm like, where are they burying this stuff? To your point, Erica, because it's, there's no summary. It's just a yes, we don't worry. We've got it covered. Like, no, I don't believe you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So same with um, like police um, lawsuits, like when police officers get sued, like and then or and and we settle. Right. No, they didn't lose in court, but we had to settle. So are they still on the force? Like, are, do they still have their jobs? Like if settling is kind of like a guilty plea, it's like because if you feel like you were innocent, you would take it to 100%. court and prove your innocence. hundred percent. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Definitely. No. Yes, we have raised those questions. Um, And um, a lot of the uh, a lot of I'm still um, looking over reviewing all of my emails that uh, our emails in the office of Ward F that we have sent to Director Shea. We have to forward them to the B.A., um, so we're working on getting, um, I inundated the BA last week with a bunch of emails. Um, so I'm looking forward to those responses, um, the, the, and getting, um, more information that I, I couldn't get initially. I mean, this is all, this is all feeding towards one of the things that I feel very strongly about uh, around the de-escalation training that we're, we're still not seeing a comprehensive, um, de-escalation program for the entirety of our public affairs department and so if we have to start tallying up the dollars that we're spending on this stuff then we we have to start doing that because then we have to be able to say to director shea you know you had the opportunity to put in de-escalation de training this year that would have avoided you know x many amount of dollars paid out over settlements or at least you know part of that right it's not going to eliminate all of the issues but it would reduce that and so again you can't afford not to do this not only for the good of the community but for the good of your team for the good of your you know your police officer mm -hmm. agreed thank you gina once again and thank you everybody who's watching this on demand or who is uh watching this on facebook you can follow us on instagram and um facebook and even next door um, or visit us online if you are not on social media. The People's Ward F um, website is available at everythingwardf.com. Uh, and we invite you to join us on Monday and Wednesday for the cau caucus and council meeting. Thank you, Gina, so much. I appreciate your input as always. I am Erica Walker, Councilman Gilmore, Chief of Staff. Peace and power to you all. Thank you so much, Erica. Feel better soon. Thank you.